Hey guys, Waggish American here. Today I'll be doing an inbox review of Academy's 172nd scale A10A Operation Iraqi Freedom. Firstly, the box. The box top features what I consider to be an absolutely stunning painting of the warthog doing what it does best. It's a truly amazing painting, and what I really like, the low key, the very small, minimal branding and text on the cover, I guess on the, the box top, makes the makes the subject stand out even more. Additionally, and this is a little tip, I one of these days maybe I'll show off the walls of my work workstation. But every time I build a kit that has box a box art like this that I think is really nice in very minimal text, I'll cut out as little as I can and then hang it as a poster. Uh, ooh, this is gonna look gross. Sorry in advance, but this is this is an example of what I mean. I've got the the box top from the B17 I built I think last year and that is my that's a poster on my wall now. On the sides of the box Academy includes several reference pictures of a very nicely albeit cleanly built A10. Particularly enjoyably Academy has resisted falling prey to the increasingly popular European manufacturer method. So instead of side opening box, we do get a nice, easy to use, and sturdy top opening box. Let's crack open the box and see what's inside. First up, the instructions. These instructions are a brochure style, that is a single sheet of paper which has been folded over into itself. Now typically I am not a big fan of these kinds of instructions, however, the, the, this kit is uh, surprisingly simple and it does not have that many steps, and those steps are not very complicated. It's a fairly low parts count for all the detail they managed to cram in. So in this instance, it's not that bad. On the front of the instruction brochure, Academy includes another printing in black and white of the kit box art. Beneath that, there's a short blurb about the A10's history in four different languages, including English, German, and what I assume is Japanese and Korean. Although one of those might be Chinese or something. I'm not, I'm not really, uh, up up with the Asiatic languages, unfortunately. A quick side note, feel free to pause the video here and just take a peek at the English the English section. There are there are quite a few uh, fairly fairly comical just and kind of just kind of clunkily worded translations in the English section. You can tell you can it's very clear that, that the description and type history was written in a different language and then probably directly translated. So if you want, give that a read. It's it's pretty interesting. The construction steps are actually fairly well laid out. The build begins in the cockpit, runs through the airframe, and ends with smaller parts such as the landing gear and the armaments, presumably after you've finished painting the model itself. The only part of the instructions I find myself disagreeing with are here at step six. At this step, Academy instructs you to attach the clear canopy and gun sight. And I, I do not agree with, with that placement for one simple reason. Um, I would wait until after the armaments are attached to do any of this because odds are you're going to be attaching armaments with either super glue or uh, the tube, tube model glue. And I would want to keep my my clear parts as far away from that glue as possible. Just in case a little speck gets thrown up for some reason, it would ruin your canopy. So I would, if I were, if I were at Academy, I would have moved the clear parts to the last step of, of the build. Finally, on the rear, Academy includes a painting guide for the two decal options, which share the same paint scheme. The first is stationed, was stationed in Iraq, and is going to be the one you want to go for if you want to weather it up and get it really dirty like you see in, in pictures from the conflict. And the second is uh, an un unnamed pilot flying out of Germany. The kit is molded on five sprues of the famous Academy green-gray plastic and also on one sprue of clear plastic. 
containing only five parts. A short little note beforehand, I have removed several parts from the sprues, notably the jet na nacelles and the fuselage halves for test fitting. So as you see those, those that is not how they come in the kit. They are well, they are well attached to their sprues when you get the kit in the box. The first sprue contains the aircraft's unguided munitions and these are massively disappointing. Though they look fine from this angle, when you flip them over, each and every one has very large, very deep ejector pin marks, two each, dead center on the bomb. These are going to require a fair bit of cleaning and sanding and puttying time. So get your sanders ready if you're going to build this kit all loaded up with these bombs, as I plan to. This next sprue consists almost entirely of additional munitions and hard points and such with a couple cockpit details and other uh, assorted bits, though in the box it is dominated by the massive engine nacelles, which uh, these would go here and here if I had not already removed them, or I believe they sat, yes, they sat like that. Again, these parts are very, very nice. Um, this time, there's no damaging ejector pin marks on anything. You can see plenty of deep ejector pin marks, but they're all hidden, which is definitely the way to go. Not, not entirely sure what Academy was thinking uh, with those, with that first sprue. But this sprue is very clean. The third sprue contains parts for two additional guided bombs, along with several launch rails and such, most of which are for the unguided bombs. Although this sprue is mostly dominated by larger structural details, such as the landing gear door and cockpit, or landing gear floor, I'm sorry, and cockpit bottom that you see here and intakes for the jets and major landing gear parts. As, as already mentioned, all of these are flash free and once again Academy managed to avoid any damaging ejector pin marks on any of these parts. The final two sprues are dominated by the wings. This sprue has the two top wing halves and several missiles along with a, a, a structural point, the lower nose. And this, this sprue contains the one-piece lower wing and several other large structural pieces, such as the tail assembly. Once again, all previous issues with soft details, uh, molding lines, and poor, terrible, really, uh, ejector pin marks have been alleviated on this sprue. As you can see, there are ejector pin marks, and they're very large but they're not damaging to the surface. So some of these that protrude, you just have to take your knife, cut them down, and you're good to go for joining the wing. You don't have to worry about cleaning those up nearly as much as you do the ones on the bombs. Finally, the kit does include the two fuselage halves on their own separate sprue. However, I've already taken them off so that I can do test fits, as uh, I think most modelers are prone to do when they get a new kit. As you can see, the fuselage here is slightly warped. Now, it looks, it looks like a pretty big gap, but I'm not applying much pressure, and once you put a little bit of pressure down, it quickly snaps into place. So once you get the glue and tape out, this slight warpage should not be a problem. And as you can see, all, all uh, panel lines are nice, fine, evenly cut, recessed details. One final comment on the fuselage halves. I have no idea how Academy did this, but this is a fantastic touch. These little, I, I honestly don't even know what they are. They're not intakes, they're facing the wrong direction to be intakes, so some kind of exhaust port are actually molded straight through. I don't know how the molds were cut to do this, but it's an amazing touch and that adds a lot of realism to the model. Finally, the clear sprue. Now the molding on this is very nice. I don't see any warpage, there's no bubbles anywhere, no mold lines. Now, mold lines. Though there aren't any present, a type of mold line 
is what makes this canopy infuriating to me, even more so than the ejector pin marks on the bombs. Now it looks like you'd think that this canopy would have very nice uh, uh, line, canopy lines, very easy to easy to easy to mask canopy lines. But if I, as I reflect it, you'll notice that that is a perfectly flat surface. For whatever terrible terrible reason, Academy has decided to mold the the canopy lines on the inside of the canopies. I know, it's just as confusing to me as I'm sure it is to you. So that's going to make masking unpleasant to say the least. Otherwise though, besides that flaw, uh, the canopy does look very nice. It, it's very clear, very thin, all, all good things. Lastly, the decals. Now the, these decals appear to be very typical early 2000s Academy decals. Uh, these are kind of famous and a little bit a little bit infamous really for not applying very well not being very quick to conform and not sticking very well however I will say these are quite a bit thinner than other uh, these are v quite a bit thinner than other Academy decals I've I've worked with so uh, it's possible the conforming thing won't be a problem though I highly doubt that the sticking will have been solved the decals are printed on the oh-so-familiar, strangely bright blue Academy backing paper. Luckily, unlike a couple other Academy kits I've looked at recently, all of these decals are in register and properly aligned, which is nice. Although throughout, the carrier film appears to be a little on the large side, and especially in interior, on interior parts like these instrument dials will probably need to be cut down. The stencils are not legible, however, given that this decal sheet is almost 15 years old and given that it's 172nd scale, this really isn't that big of a deal. I think, I think as modelers we've been kind of spoiled by the cartograph, the cartograph era stencils where even in 144 scale you can read every no-step st stencil, you can read every octane label. They, they look like they'll, they'll work for very well, they'll be convincing. That is the Academy 172nd scale A10A. Now I haven't I haven't built it yet, obviously, but um, from what I've seen in the kit, looking at the the shapes and the details, and looking at other 72nd scale A10s, I have to say that if you want an A10 in 72nd scale, this kit is probably going to be your best bet. All right, once I once I get around to building this kit, I will will be sure to put the video here. Thanks, and I will see you guys next time.